Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Cahaya Sofiali and I'm here to tell you about a very important issue. Oh, and before we start, here's my other members. Here is Rihanna, here is Amina, and here is Aisha. So we are from the school, Brainy Bunch International School, and this is a part of our Global Perspectives IGCSE project. We've been burning through the Earth's resources like there's no tomorrow. Fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas still power four out of every five homes, businesses, and vehicles globally. Why? It's because it's more efficient, reliable, and convenient. Sure, they've helped us advance, but they've also left behind a pretty big mess. In 2024, fossil fuels were responsible for over 37.5 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions worldwide. That's more than 10 Empire State Buildings worth of carbon emissions worldwide every single day. And we're already seeing the effects. Rising seas, deadlier storms, record heat waves. Climate change isn't some distant threat. It's already here. Plus, it's not just hurting our planet. We are affected too. From health issues to food insecurity and economic instability, the list just keeps on growing. And here's the kicker. Non-renewable means finite. Oil may run dry in less than 50 years. Coal and gas won't last forever either. That's why we decided to do something about it starting right here in our very own school. First and foremost, we interviewed three individuals relevant to our topic. Our first order of business was to accumulate more information on the issue. We searched around for relevant sources and eventually stumbled across a company called Pendingingan Megajana. Megajana is a provider of district cooling systems, whereby a cooling plant supplies chilled water through underground pipelines to a building's centralized air conditioning system. So what exactly sets them apart from other cooling systems? First of all, Unlike companies that use decentralized cooling with individual units per building, Megajana uses a district cooling system where one central plant cools multiple buildings. Combined with energy conservation efforts through thermal energy storage, this makes their system far more energy efficient and eco-friendly, reducing around 7,000 tons of carbon dioxide emissions annually. Other than that, due to their efficiency, operating and maintenance costs are lower than most decentralized cooling systems. Customers would also save 20% in utility charges from electricity conservations. When you talk about energy, you have to look at both sides of the spectrum. So one is the supply of energy, and then the other side is the demand of energy, how you use the energy. So when people talk about renewable energy or energy transition, the famous word that people like to use nowadays, most of them, they like to focus on the supply of energy. So you're talking about using solar, using biomass, or using other sustainable or alternative sources of energy. But at the same time, you need to make sure that you use your energy in a wise, in a most optimized manner. So that's why uh, energy efficiency is how well you use your energy. So regardless, you can use any form of energy, green, the greenest energy that you can find. But don't use it well, you do a lot of wastage, it's also uh, doesn't make sense, right? As far as being individual like us, I don't think we can build our own power plant. Yes. But for us, we can do the low hanging fruits first. The quick things that we can do, like when you uh, use the fridge, do you leave it open, do you put hot or warm food inside straight into the fridge? You do these small, small things which can actually reduce the consumption of energy. If you reduce the consumption of energy, you reduce the consumption of electricity. Therefore, in return, you actually are able to reduce more carbon and actually uh, mitigate the production of carbon. Yeah. But before that, we spoke to Encik Salam, the deputy group CEO of our school, to find out more about the school's current dependence on non-renewable energy. He explained that the school is currently using energy sourced from TNB, also known as Tanaga National Burhead, which is the largest electricity utility in Malaysia. As part of the school's initiatives, they have already installed energy efficient devices on each level of the building to improve overall efficiency. He also mentioned that they are in discussions with several parties proposing solar energy solutions. 
The school is seriously considering adopting a solar power system as part of their environmental sustainable governance strategy. He acknowledged that while there is a cost involved, it is a long-term investment the school is willing to make. However, they are still deciding which vendor to partner with and are looking for the right time to install the system in order to ensure a safe installation process that avoids hazards or disruptions. So what about Malaysia? To get a clear picture of our stance on non-renewable energy, we went straight to the source, Suruhanjaya Tenaga, or the Energy Commission, the agency in charge of regulating Malaysia's energy system. Here's what we found. As of 2024, 93% of our electricity still comes from non-renewables like coal and natural gas. That's nearly all of it. Meanwhile, our national goal is to hit 40% renewable energy by 2035 and 70% by 2050, meaning we've got a long way to go. But there is good news. Compared to some of our neighbours, Malaysia is ahead in planning, with the National Energy Transition Roadmap already in motion and early investments in green hydrogen and carbon capture technologies, meaning we're not just talking about change, we're actively preparing for it. Still, getting there won't be easy. The Energy Commission told us about the real challenges. Our power grid isn't ready for renewables, we don't have enough energy storage, and coal is still the cheaper option. On top of that, Malaysia needs to keep the lights on while also trying to go green. So it's a tough balance between energy security and sustainability. But progress is happening. Programs like net energy metering let people install solar panels and earn credits for extra power. The feed-in tariff gives a fixed payment to those selling clean energy to the grid. The corporate renewable energy supply scheme helps companies buy renewable energy directly, and energy efficiency rules like efficient management of electrical energy regulations and minimum energy performance standards are making sure we waste less power in the first place. We're not there yet, but Malaysia is moving. And just like we're starting small at our school, these steps are planting the seeds for something bigger. In terms of management RE and non-RE, ST does not directly phase out coal, but it supports national uh, policies aim to re reduce the coal usage. No new coal uh, plants are being built uh, and existing one will be retired as their purchase uh, agreements expire. And for the natural gas regulations, ST ensuring that operations are safe and efficient. We are pro promoting uh, green technologies in national energy policy 2022 uh, to 2040, emphasize the development and commercialization of green tech, uh, aligned with the goal effort to reduce emission and also investment in solar PV. We uh, actively promote uh, the benefits of RE through public uh, campaigns, emphasizing on cost saving and also environmental benefit and also long term energy security. For industry engagement program, we do have extensive consultations with businesses are conducted under NETA to align the corporate strategies with NETA, include workshop, forum to highlight the opportunities in solar energy, green hydrogen and also carbon capture uh, technologies. Okay. As, as an individual, we should use our energy properly as our ta tagline, be energy smart. So we turn off the appliances when we do not use that. That uh, small, small behavior will contribute to the reduction of the usage of power, then reduce the capacity of coal in generate the new power. So, what exactly can we do as individuals? Based on our interviews with the experts, you have to use your energy efficiently. While Malaysia is powering through to achieve their aim, we can contribute and help out by doing even the smallest action. Remember, using your appliances wisely isn't just smart. It's basically a superpower, saving the environment one step at a time. So, the next time you leave a room, don't just walk away. Turn those appliances off. Your wallet, the planet, and maybe even your future self will thank you. Spreading awareness and proposing change are just the first steps in this journey. As the saying goes, even the tallest tree started as a seed. We hope that our actions can inspire others to make a difference of their own, creating a chain reaction that leads to a bigger impact. For a brighter, brighter cleaner, cleaner future. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.